Hi guys, my name is Bob Crum. I'm an illustrator. I live and work in Wisconsin. Do not feel bad for me. It could be worse. There's a place called Siberia, and I hear it's a little colder. We've been kind of in this mode of doing drawings, paintings, speculating what Disney characters, specifically princesses, might look like if they were creature feature monsters. So far we did Mulan as a vampire and Sleeping Beauty as a zombie. So what are some of the other ones that are left? Logan commented last week and said that I should do a werewolf and possibly that Belle would make a fantastic werewolf. And I think that might just work. All right, Logan, here we go. i um, going to go ahead and start like I normally do and just paint a blob. And I just, I don't know why, it just helped me get like past that, that blank white page. I think it was Ernest Hemingway called it the white bull and you have to tame the white bull. And essentially... The idea of a blank page is just very, very intimidating to artists and writers. Anything in nature that is already like sitting still, if you want to get it off its duff, you got to really push hard like a boulder. And once it gets going, it tends to want to stay going. So I draw that little blob and I let her rip from there. I kind of freaked myself out a little bit with my werewolf here. Uh, from the from the beginning, I wanted to stay true to the the actual idea of a wolf's anatomy in the face and hind legs. It, but because I don't like the idea of the the regular wolf man you see in the in the black and white horror films, it's just not as cool. Um, you got like no snout. It looks like a dude who has like really bad facial hair. Not everyone can be as blessed with facial hair as I am, but he has a big blunt nose and it just doesn't look canine enough, doesn't look dog-like enough. So yeah, I'm going to kind of go ahead and give her that typical skull, that elongated look to the canine skull. I guess this is technically lupine, which is not the same as canine, right? Latin. So yeah, I'm giving it, I actually start with that skull because sometimes getting the exact anatomy underneath, or at least something pretty close, really helps me draw things in perspective correctly. In the end, it works. It just works. If you're looking at reference, that's a great start. If you're actually building what's underneath the structure of things, that's even better. So that's kind of why I draw like it's a an x-ray. You're seeing through someone's clothes, but not in a creepy manner. You're seeing their skeleton and sometimes their muscles and everything. Even if I'm going to cover it up entirely with clothing or, you know, something that's getting in the way of their body, at least it looks like it has a place in this world, like it's contextual. What is it about creatures like a werewolf that attracts people? I don't know that we're actually attracted so much like we are to vampires where they're beautiful and kind of you know alluring a werewolf is all covered in hair terrifying kind of dog-like creatures they only like work in during around the full moon which freaks people out for different reasons but they're not pretty so why do we still like hang on to these ideas um the, we we not even meaning us in like modern day history this goes back to i believe the first accounts of something like a werewolf comes about in the, like, the year 22 <laughs> which is a really long time ago to be talking about things like werewolves but really uh it's in greek that's where we get the word lycanthropy or lycanthrope it's in the greek where we first see those syllables so yeah they are scary they hang out at night in the original um, tellings of all of these kind of folklore about werewolves, they were pretty much after the meat. They were after the sheep. They were after the, the kids. I mean, it's it's a horrible thing. There are so many different things that make a werewolf in different mythologies and folklores. I think that in the Greek mythology, it was Zeus who, like, struck someone and turned him into a wolf for doing something stupid. And that's how, you know, gods, they do. They punish back and forth and the Greek pantheon is probably one of the weirdest and most vindictive and broken pantheons out there uh to my reckoning it takes different things in different cultures there is at one point i think you have to completely strip down to where you're not wearing any clothes and then put on a belt 
made of wolf's fur. And that makes you a werewolf. Ooh, it's like super weird. I forget where that one comes from. Uh, others, it doesn't take much other than to lay down outside and let the full moon's light hit your face. Boom, werewolf. But how do you like get rid of a werewolf? Is it, you know, in the, in the movies and stuff, we see silver bullets and silver things. And honestly, there's not a whole lot other than contemporary folklore that says anything about silver. Silver's not really the thing that kills them in most tales. I like to think that it's really just somebody out there who is trying to give some serious gravity to the stories about werewolves, and they say something like, well, if you want to kill a werewolf, you're going to need something made of silver. And basically, that's a pretty unattainable metal, so it kind of lends some credence to the fact that werewolves are scary, and they're super hard to kill. It's like Superman, what's his weaknesses? Other than what's-her-name, Lois Lane, who is always making trouble for him. That's his primary weakness, but he's also, he's vulnerable to kryptonite. Well, let me see if I got any of that in my back pocket. Well, it's the same thing with silver. Werewolves are vulnerable to silver somehow. You know, I'm thinking to myself, when I first started, like, tooling this through, when I first started thinking about drawing this, I thought, oh, I'm gonna have the prince hunt her because she's the bad guy, as we are wont to do in these things. But then I thought, Wait, the prince is like really the dumbest part of that whole movie. If you look at the Disney movie, there's like the beast and he's called the beast through the whole thing. And I don't think you ever learn the prince's name so that by the end, you're completely divested of his character entirely. And it's almost a letdown. You're like, I'm into the beast now. I think he's kind of cool. But now that he's all shaven and doesn't have weird feet and I don't know his name, I just don't care about him anymore. So I don't want him in my drawing to be hunting Belle. I want Gaston because he has way more character. That dude's got like, he even says in his song, every last inch of him is covered with hair, but not in a bad werewolf way, but in a good macho, I'm a hunter guy way. So he's already a hunter. Of course he would hunt Belle if she were a werewolf. He's also got like this, I have to make him different. I can't just make him the hunter from the film. So. I'm putting a werewolf's head on his shoulder. This is like a trophy that he has gotten after hunting, I don't know, somebody else. Maybe LeFou's that goofy little guy in the Disney movie who is super obnoxious, but is like his buddy and his yes man and will do whatever he says and praise him for whatever. Maybe he got turned into a werewolf at some point and Gaston had to put him down and now he wears LeFou's head on his shoulder. How else do you get rid of a werewolf? Werewolves are vulnerable to all manner of things in older folklore. Most of them in the Middle Ages were actually, the remedies that were actually meant to cure a werewolf proved to be fatal. The cures were things like, you have to put a knife in their head. What? Wait, that's like fatal to everybody. Once again, these like supernatural creatures are are vulnerable to things that we're all vulnerable to. So it's, you know, we're, we're just trying to cure them, not kill them. So talk more about the cures. There's another one that says, you know, if you're wearing, if they're buck naked and they're wearing this wolf skin belt, well, then take the belt off and they'll be, you know, cured. Oh, duh. Obviously, if you're made into it by your fashion sense, why not be made out of it by your fashion sense? Other remedies, um, I think it was in Germany or elsewhere in Europe, uh, you could be cured with wolfsbane, which is like some kind of, I don't know, a plant or something. Or you could like have it excommunicated, not excommunicated. Exercised, that's the word, from you by a priest because it was like a supernatural devilish thing. Those are pretty exotic, right? Other places in Europe had some pretty benign cures. Actually, pretty easy. Like if they knew your actual given name and they said it, like if I was a werewolf and I was like, ah, and I came around the corner, you could remedy me of my werewolfness by just saying, Bob, Bob, Bob. You have to say my name three times. Actually, I think it would be Robert, Robert, Robert. But whatever your given name is, if you repeat it three times, boom, cured, hello. That's like the opposite of Beetlejuice. Even more kind of benign, I think it was somewhere in the way up north Norwegian area, they said that if you simply scold, if you shake your finger and talk really sternly at the werewolf, they'll be cured. I'm not making this up. I, really. These are just some really lame ways of actually curing being a werewolf. I think elsewhere, the Greeks, or maybe with the Romans, 
thought that you could just tucker someone out. You turn into a werewolf, let's just run him around the block a whole bunch, and eventually he'll fall over and not want to be a werewolf anymore. I gave Belle the were bell. I gave her a book, because that is what she's known for, all the reading and the learning, and not so much the turning into something very lupine under the moon. So here's Gaston. He is, I'm, I'm giving him a bow, because he has like some weird gun at some point, maybe a blunderbuss. In the film, if you watch, he has a blunderbuss, which is basically a big rifle where the end looks like a tuba or some kind of musical instrument where you could just like take fistfuls of rocks, nails, fingernail clippings, and just ram them down the front and then pow, pull the trigger and you've got basically an old, old school shotgun. But he is such a hunter that he's going to bust out the bow. He's just going to go out there with arrows, so he has to get up close and personal, which is basically his goal with Bell all along, right? It's just, you know, the kind of dating method has changed, you know, before, whatever. Other weird remedies. The Catholic Church, um, at one point, like, sainted somebody. What's it called? Can canonized or sainted somebody? I don't know. Made this dude into a saint. And his name was, like, Herbert or Herbert or something like that. And he is basically, when you're a saint, when you're made into a saint, you're the patron saint of something. Like, you know, if I was made into a saint someday in some alternate universe, what? I would be made into the saint of something I was well known for. I would be made into the saint of body hair and drawing weird things on YouTube. Well, this guy, he was sainted or whatever. Is it sainted? Ah, he was made into a saint and he was the patron saint of hunters, patron saint of the hunt, animals, and I think math. Now, I'm not kidding. It's like a thing that Catholics made him sainted for all of these other things but also math i mean look it up so saint herbert or whatever his name is uh had some kind of strange epiphany at some point he was a bishop and a very important guy and he didn't die some crazy death like a lot of the saints did but he did lead kind of a weird life he had a miracle associated with him that nobody could corroborate he was basically out hunting as he was wont to do because hunting and he was tracking a stag and it was a big Stag. They call them hearts, H-A-R-T, back in that time, because they couldn't just call them deer. I don't know. There was a heart, and, and it turned around at one point and looked directly at him. And when St. Herbert was looking at the thing, he noticed right between its antlers, because it was a boy and it had big antlers, he noticed right between its antlers a cross or a crucifix or whatever. And so that's how he knew not to shoot it, because evidently, it's a really important heart to have this thing between its antlers. So he sits and waits, and the thing, the heart, the stag, actually instructs him on how best to behave as a hunter from here on out, and actually gives him a lot of rules and things that he ought to follow if he's going to be a good hunter. Like, here is a deer that clearly doesn't want to get shot, but if he's going to get shot, he's going to lay down some guidelines. Like, I forget what the guidelines were, you know, try and be humane. Uh, don't don't shoot like some some deer before they're of prime age. Don't shoot a mother who has a baby around and all kinds of things. So like this is how he was given the guidelines and the rules and the code of decency for um, hunting, hunting things. So that was his deal. Incidentally, if you look at a bottle of Jägermeister, which is a type of drink, that tastes like licorice and also evil. It tastes just like evil. It's the worst. I don't even know why people like it. It tastes like licorice and evil, and the logo on the front is a buck with two big horns and a cross in between them. I wonder if it's related somehow to St. Herbert and the hunting. But I know Jägermeister, the name of the thing, I think is Jäger is hound, meister, master, hound master. Some hunts were conducted with hounds. Eh. I think it all it all jibes. There's like two fact checkers out there right now just furiously hammering data into Google thinking somehow he's got this all wrong. His name's not Herbert and it's not a heart and it's not booze with a crucifix and all this stuff. You know what? Correct me later. It should be lots and lots of fun. I'm just going off the top of my head. Gaston looks like maybe he knows. 
Maybe he knows he's being stalked and he's just like biding his time. Normally, the, the, the past couple, I've made the monster the one that is being stalked and kind of maybe oblivious to the hunter or the survivor and at any moment gonna be jumped. But in this one, I kind of wanted that cat and mouse feel or in this case, obnoxious hunter slash werewolf person. That dynamic, that dynamic of of hunter and prey, prey and hunter, who's what, what's who, what, ah, actually I'm wondering, is Gaston, after he takes out the werewolf bell, is he just gonna mount the head on his wall, worse yet, oh my gosh, worse yet, is it gonna be like a barbecue situation, because that sounds awful, no, I wonder if he's thought this through, because he's a hunter, not an assassin, but at what point does one become the other? So clearly I've made some aesthetic decisions on how I was going to make the werewolf bell look the way she is. Curved nails, long snout, kind of that crouching dog-like pose. But, you know, there's a lot of actual stories out there that say that a werewolf, someone who has shifted into their wolf form, really is indistinguishable from a regular wolf. And I think that's kind of boring. I didn't want to draw just a regular wolf back there with maybe long hair. So to be indistinguishable is not cool, right? But one of the neater things is like they tried to figure out if you were a werewolf based on things, characteristics that you had before your change. One of them, a unibrow. Not kidding. If you had a unibrow, people were like, whoa, maybe this person is a were person of some kind. You're a werewolf if you have a unibrow. Wow, that's messed up. Body shaming. Something about ears, the placement of your ears could give you away. Like I forget if they were low or big or I don't know what. Something having to do with your ears could make you like candidate, prime candidate for being like hunted. The way you walked, I mean that's pretty subjective, right? Wow. Hey, check him out. He's walking kind of weird. I wonder if he turns into a wolf and the full moon. You see me here switching back and forth between Photoshop and... Clip Studio Paint because there's like two things that I don't know how to do in Clip Studio Paint yet that I do know how to do in Photoshop. And so I will switch back for just those two little tiny things because I'm really enjoying Clip Studio right now as opposed to Photoshop because it behaves a little bit more like an artist wants it to behave. Photoshop is still a photo manipulation software. It's not really built for painting. It's not really built as an analog to drawing and how it feels and how it behaves. So as, as I learn more about Clip Studio Paint, I'm gonna hang in there with it. I ignored it for years. I stuck in there with Photoshop for years because it was, to me, the most professional choice. And, and the only other thing that I could, that people would like say you should use was a thing called Manga Studio. And if you know anything about manga, it's highly specialized Asian art style. Think anime, but on paper. Well, I like the manga, but I'm not gonna draw manga, so I, why do I want the Manga Studio whatever it's called. And then they rebranded themselves to Clip Studio Paint because I think I wasn't the only person who thought, hmm, I'm an artist, but I'm not into manga, so I won't use this software. So now that they've gone ahead and rebranded, I'm, oh, I'm gonna try this. And it's turned out just, I think it's brilliant. It's wonderful. It, since it's a Japanese make, a Japanese software title, the documentation gets a little weird. Uh, the translations are into our language gets kind of fun and it's a little bit hard to figure out what their actual meaning is when you're trying to learn a new feature or tool. It's like, hey, let's guess what they're actually thinking. Stylistically, I didn't know where to go with Bell. The werewolf version of Bell should have fur all over because that is what werewolves have, fur all over, amongst other things. But she is, you know, like fair-skinned Caucasian girl, and I don't know what it's like for a fair-skinned Caucasian girl to grow a bunch of hair all over her body, so... I played around a little bit with doing some brownish hair because her hair was brown. And then she's in the moonlight. She's kind of in that outside darkness. And so I added like a blue cast to it and it started making it look a little bit more gray. And I kind of liked that because I had some contrast literally all over the map with this design because I, I didn't know what to do. It's all right. I'm not, you know, in the end with you know, a lot of hindsight looking back on it. I'm not super happy with it, and in fact, I think my pose is really weird, but I'm just going to go with it, because if you don't, like, ship something, you can work on it forever. I, I could sit and, like, hold on to this piece for a year, and after a year's time futzing with it and changing things and editing things and perseverating over every tiny detail, 
I would still probably have something much along the lines of what I'm shipping today. Oh my gosh, have you guys bought your Christmas presents yet? I think I have all of it done, but only through the miracle of Amazon have I got any of this ready. So, hooray! It's that time in the video where I ask you to like the video. And if you like it and haven't subscribed, subscribe to this thing. And if you subscribe but keep missing when these things actually come out, hit the bell. YouTube will give you some kind of notification. Also, share. Share the video with someone who you think might find it interesting. And lastly, create. Create something, especially if it's a better day for someone else.